Tony Abbott's a foreign tour. How's it going? Oh, look, uh, every time he leaves the country, people want to portray him as, you know, Barry McKenzie out there embarrassing the country and looking like the bogan from Australia. But I, I think he's, he's been quiet and polite, and it's a huge event. Um, the fact that he's standing shoulder to shoulder with Angela Merkel, that he's, you know, thanking the troops with the Queen. I don't see what else he could have been doing better than he currently is. It's interesting you say that. I noticed the number of uh, media outlets, Fairfax and Sky and others, uh, and, and Labor exploiting this, Tanya Plibersek, that he was on the outer, that Tony Abbott was standing on the outer of a group picture here it is now at the D-Day commemoration, standing on his own, and they froze the picture about here. Look at that silly Tony Abbott, all on his own on climate change and all that. What they didn't show was this last bit, where he's actually standing next to the world's most powerful woman, the German Chancellor, and making friends. I mean, this is the kind of media coverage that Tony Abbott is uh, having to cop, Michael. Yeah. And look, let's be frank, every trip that Tony Abbott has made overseas he has outperformed expectations because the left and the Fairfax press wanted to portray him, as you've said, as a sort of sort of person who had no background in foreign policy. All his trips to Indonesia, the two of them, to, to China, to Japan, etc., etc., these have all been very successful trips. And the free trade agreements on his last international trip, I mean, he's been a real outperformer on foreign policy issues. I'll give you an example. The Indonesia trip, uh, this, this particular mm. leg of it, can mm. there be any doubt of the warmth between Tony Abbott and the Indonesian, outgoing Indonesian president, Yudhoyono. Um, I thought this relationship was supposed to be in the toilet and all caused by Tony Abbott. How, how can these pictures uh, tell a different story? Well, Australia and Indonesia have a relationship that's based on geography and on strategic mm. interests. It's much bigger than the leader of either country at any one point in time. And we saw that with, you know, Paul Keating's relationship with Indonesia during his period of time. Every prime minister is goaded by the media into having fights with Indonesia, but Indonesia and Australia need to be good friends and we always will be for bigger reasons than the personalities of the day. Mm. I think that's right. Another uh, beat up uh, this week. Um, his tri Tony Abbott's going to the United States. Uh, we saw a big front page headline in the Melbourne Age newspaper saying that ties were really at risk. Barack Obama's just said he's going to cut emissions from power stations by a third. He's like to ask uh, Tony Abbott to put climate change back on the agenda of the G20 meeting that Australia's going to host in November. Uh, ties at risk over mm. global warming? You've got to be kidding me. Look, Andrew, I'm afraid the age in the last uh, year or so has gone quite batty. Um, it's now competing with The Guardian, uh, The Green Left Weekly, etc., etc. It has lost any connection with the average reader in, in Victoria. Uh, I can't comment on the Sydney and Herald because I don't read it each day, but you look at the age front pages, there's usually two or three stories, very anti-conservative, anti-coalition, anti-Tony Abbott, and they're in this competition with the Green Left and the Guardian. So they're moving to the left, and it's no longer the paper of record that the age has been for you know, up, you know, over 150 years. It's now, it's now a shadow of its former self, and it's very sad. And as people say, um, this the, is a the, Newswatch segment. No, well, the Global Mail, the Global Mail arrived to to try and beat off the age. Well, it basically went bust. The the, the Guardians arrived to to help, you know, to, to help the left, but it's helped sending the age broke. Uh, which it probably will when the age closes it's Monday to Friday. But in the meantime, the Guardian's free and it'll end up going broke. But there's always the ABC. But Cassandra, the point is I can't see America possibly putting our ties at risk mm. in a brawl about global warming. Uh, why would you, on earth would you do that? Why does it overshadow defence and economic and trade and diplomacy? Well, I think given the impacts that global warming, depending on which scenario you think is realistic is going to have an impact on defence and trade and other issues. It's a worthy thing to discuss, but to suggest that the US relationship would be at risk because one item is off the agenda at a meeting again is, is just nonsense, is looking for a story where there isn't one. I think that's mm. absolutely right. Mm. Mm. Uh, Michael, um, like I say, this is turning into a Newswatch uh, segment. You wanted to say something about the settlement that the ABC reached with Chris Kenny, the Conservative. Uh, News Limited and Sky News, who uh, was portrayed by the ABC mm. as having sex with a dog? Well, the Chaser boys appear to have not taken the decision of the parties to settle this in terribly good grace, and it's arguable that they're in contempt of court in relation to the settlement.
That is because um, the settlement said well, the, the ABC apologises and won't do anything, uh, won't let its staff do anything or Correct. chase it to Correct. diminish from the uh, apology for showing this disgusting Correct. image. Now, now, these are obviously matters for the court, but it's arguable that that's in contempt of court. So you've effectively got the editor-in-chief, Mark Scott, who has lost control of this organisation. I mean, Scott should have resigned over the Chaser scandal or he should have been sacked by the board. Now you've got this situation where the Chaser people have made these comments following the Supreme Court uh, settlement. What is happening at the ABC? And you know, you, you know, there must be a point at which board members resign in disgust or in disgrace. Where are these board members saying, I don't want to be associated, associated with stories showing a prominent writer having sex with a dog? I mean, these board members are associated with this, they're tainted by it. Surely some of these characters should have said enough for me, I'm resigning. And that's speaking as a former board member. Michael Craig, Cassandra Wilkinson, thank you so much for thank your you. time. Thanks, Andrew. Coming up, will the media finally stop going soft on Clive Palmer?